Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Canna Campbell. So today's video is a subscriber request video. It is general financial advice for solo single parents. What to do to get you back on your feet again financially, both in the immediate term and well into the long run. Now, if you don't know this about me, I was actually a single mother. My son Rocco is from my previous marriage and I left Rocco's father when he was about 18 months old. It was a financially frightening, um, crippling, emotionally draining time. I was a shell of a human being and I was completely overwhelmed. But I made a promise to myself that I would heal and I would learn and grow from this situation. So I pulled myself together and picked myself up. I put one foot in front of the other and day by day my journey began and I'm so glad and grateful for the insight and personal growth that I experienced. So if you are listening and watching this video as a solo parent, please know that I hear you, I feel you, I see you, but most importantly, I believe in you to not just survive, but to thrive from this. So let's get started talking about the five things you need to be thinking about and doing immediately so that it not only benefits you now, but also well into the long run. All right, the first thing you need to do is do a budget, a beautiful budget. You need to see what your total cost of living is per year. Sit down and write all of those living expenses, cross-referencing it against all of your statements so that nothing can slip through the cracks. As you're going through this, you can see how the cost of living really does add up, but it will give you an annual total cost. That is your annual total cost of living, which will allow you to build some really exciting financial goals in step number three. So make sure you keep watching. Now, as you're going through your budget, and you've worked out your total cost of living, go back to that same budget and look at removing any wastage, any subscriptions, memberships, or shopping habits that can be cut down or cut out. And when you have found out what that exact financial savings is, make it count. You want to make sure that those savings go towards your financial goals and don't evaporate or get spent elsewhere because I promise you, if you don't do this, they will. So say for example, by looking at your budget, you find say $200 per month that you can cut. What I want you to do is go and set up a regular savings plan of $200 per month to come out of your account automatically the moment you get paid. So you're really prioritizing your saving before your spending. That will mean that those true savings and sacrifices really count. Now that money is to go into a separate dedicated savings account and we're gonna put that towards step number three, which is your financial goals. Step number two is emergency money. Now I hate to break it to you, but there is no general rule of thumb as to how much emergency money you really need, like three months before or after tax. That's going to either be too much or too little. You need to look at your own situation and your own risks that you personally manage. So you might look at how many children you have, what your cost of living is, whether you have any annual leave or sick leave, what other financial support you have or savings. You need to think of the real things that are going on in your lives. Do you have any health conditions that you need to consider? What insurances do you have and what insurance excesses may you have to pay? All these little things really do add up. And sometimes bad things can happen in waves of three. So to help give you a clearer idea of how much emergency money you really need, look at the three most expensive risks that you could face, which might include losing a job, being redundant, having a change in situation, having to move, all those sorts of things, add up the total cost of those top three most expensive ones, and that's gonna give you a better idea as to how much emergency money you really need. Then now the moment you have that figure, make sure you start saving up that money in a separate dedicated savings account. Now, if you wanted to, you could use that $200 per month if you don't have any existing savings, or you might wanna go back to your budget and find new savings. Just make sure you have a separate dedicated emergency savings account. 
Now, if you have a home loan, sometimes it can be beneficial to use an offset account or a redraw facility so that you can save valuable time and interest across your home loan. Just make sure that you have emergency money and you only use your emergency money in a true emergency. And of course, when you make any withdrawal from that emergency money, you quickly replenish it as quickly as possible. Step number three is to think about your financial goals. One of the best things about being a solo parent is you take complete ownership and control and direction of your financial future. So you don't need to compromise or justify anything. Also, you get to take all the credit for your own hard work. No one can rob you of that. Everything you achieve and build is purely down to your own hard work, which is going to help contribute to you rebuilding yourself and building your own sense of self-worth, self-care and self-love. So think about what's important to you. Would you like to get rid of the debt in your life? Would you like to own your own home? Would you like to pay off your own home? Would you like to secure a healthy, long, luxurious and early retirement? Do you want to start building up passive income? Would you like to start working on your mindful money goals? Start thinking about the financial goals you want to achieve for yourself. And then as soon as you've written down those goals, start educating yourself. Sorry, financial education is not something that happens overnight. You slowly and steadily build it over time. And even myself, I'm always learning things on the go all the time. So when you invest some time in building up your own financial education, whatever financial decision you make, it's always an informed, educated one where you understand all the risks, all the rewards, all the fees, all the costs, all the implications, all the taxes, all the limitations and all the best things that are going to come from whatever financial decision you make. And you know that it's going to work for your financial situation, your financial goals and your deadline to those goals. So focus on building your education. And a great place to start is my book, Mindful Money. Now, once you've worked out your financial goals and you're building up your financial education, it's important that you continue on setting some money aside if you've done your emergency money, that is, and start getting money when you are ready to invest. So say, for example, you've got your emergency money sorted in a separate dedicated savings account and you've still got that $200 per month saving going on. As that money starts building up and when you feel ready and only when you feel ready, you can start investing. And a great financial goal that I really recommend, one that's really empowering and really exciting and is going to really help create great financial security and stability in your life, both now and well into the long run, is building up passive income streams. But building up enough passive income stream so that it, it matches your total cost of living, which you calculated in step one, number one, when you did your beautiful budget. Now, say for example, my total cost of living is $70,000 a year. I would then, if I wanted to, set my passive income goal, that is my mindful money number, at say $70,000 a year, or maybe even more if I want to account for inflation and income tax, which is really important. I would then start using that money and investing it, investing it in long-term growing passive income streams that matched my risk profile. It's important that you never invest outside of your comfort zone and you never invest below your comfort zone. You need to make sure that you're investing where you feel comfortable and you understand exactly what you are doing. Now you might turn your nose up at $200 per month, but I'll tell you what, you start with $200 per month and if you're really motivated and you've set some great goals that you're really excited about, you can then very quickly and easily bump that up from $200 per month to 220, to 250, to 300. Before you know it, you're doing $1,000 a month. And I promise you, as you start to see, feel those progress, which fuels further success, you'll actually want to look at other ways that you can bring in extra money into your life through side hustles, decluttering, selling things, maybe even getting a second job. All these things are gonna only give you extra money that you can contribute towards your financial goals and building up your passive income stream or other financial goals that you've set for yourself. You'll see where you value sacrifices and where you don't. And you'll wanna make sure that you always proactively put them towards something that counts for you. Step number four is superannuation. Now I'm gonna stop you for a second and share with you some important stats that I read this morning. According to Advisor Voice, one in three women in Australia retire with no superannuation money whatsoever. That is really alarming. And 70% of women rely on the age pension to get them through retirement. Now today, as a rough guide, the age pension is approximately $21,000 a year. Now, I personally don't know many people who could live off 
$21,000 a year. And that $21,000 a year needs to cover rent, it needs to cover food, utilities, and some kind of lifestyle. It's going to be tough. Now, I don't want you to be a statistic. I want you to make sure that you watch this video, you watch it again if you need to, and you go and apply all this advice for your situation so that you don't ever need to rely on the government. I want you to be an independent, self-funded retiree. So this means paying attention to your superannuation, finding out where your superannuation money is, finding out exactly how much money you have in total, working out where it is invested and making any changes if needed as to where it is invested. Ideally, it should match your risk profile. Now, a lot of people like to consolidate their superannuation into the one account and it makes a lot of sense because it's very efficient and it makes it easier to track and monitor your financial journey and financial progress. However, if you consolidate, please consolidate with care. Make sure you've checked all the policy details and benefits and fees and expenses such as taxes before you consolidate anything, in particular around personal insurances. Because if you roll a small superannuation account or a big superannuation account that has personal insurances attached to it and you're rolling into a new account, you will lose that policy benefit automatically. And you may not be able to reapply for it in your new main superannuation account. So if you do need insurances, and I will say most people do really need personal insurances, make sure you take out a replacement policy of personal insurance first and make sure it's accepted and in force in writing before you make any consolidations. I never want you to be exposed financially in any situation whatsoever. So don't jump the gun. Make sure you do your research before you consolidate anything so that you don't lose any perks or benefits or expose yourself to additional risk fees and costs. Now, whether you consolidate or not, you can look at each of those superannuation accounts or even just the one and see how much income you have received from your investments within super. Because remember, your superannuation is your investment portfolio is just locked away. Now, say, for example, my passive income goal is $70,000 per year and say I'm earning, say, three and a half thousand dollars a year within my superannuation investments. That means I'm five percent already of achieving my mindful money number goal. And that means I'm going to focus all of my energy in combination with other financial strategies, such as investing outside of super to help build up my long term passive income stream to $70,000. But you can see how superannuation is going to really help me in combination with other financial strategies. So pay attention to your superannuation and take control. And then the fifth and final thing that you need to be thinking about as a single solo parent, and that is your personal insurances and your estate planning needs. You must think about what type of insurance policies you have in place and what levels of cover you need. Now, of course, this may mean looking at your budget and having to factor the cost of those premiums and policies back into your budget. However, some superannuation companies and insurance companies can allow these premiums to sometimes be paid by superannuation. So it doesn't impact your budget and allows it to be a little bit more affordable. Now, there are pros and cons that come with this. So it's important that you do your research and understand any limitations that come from your superannuation funding those policy premiums. But it is definitely a helpful way if insurance is important to you, but you're on a really tight budget. So you need to be considering life insurance, TPD, trauma cover, and most importantly, income protection so that your family's financial well-being is never compromised or jeopardized. And should you ever get sick from an income protection or a trauma cover policy, you can focus on getting healthier again and getting back on your own two feet rather than having to worry about money. And then finally, estate planning and power of attorney. If you are a solo parent, you need to think about what would happen to you, your estate, all your assets, those pictures, your dog, your cat, your home, your car, maybe even credit card debts, any loans, any financial responsibilities, any financial assets, whatever it may be. You want to know about where that money is going to go, who to and in what capacity. Are you going to use a testamentary trust if you have young children? Who is going to look after your children? There are so many things that must be considered when it comes to your wills. It's nothing simple and straightforward. And that's why you must go and speak to a lawyer and get personal professional legal advice, which then leads me to finally end with powers of attorney. Who do you know and trust that will make the best decision for you and your family if you aren't able to make that decision for yourself? 
particularly in light of mental health and dementia and Alzheimer's. It's so important that you have someone who knows who you are, knows what's important to you, knows what you'd want and can represent your voice through a, a pa through a power of attorney. So think about who is the best person for you. The last thing you would ever want is an ex-partner that you're not in a great relationship with, making decisions that would definitely not reflect your value system. Now I promise you, if you follow all five things listed in this video right now, you will start to feel so much better about yourself financially. And you will also start to feel a little bit of excitement about what your financial future holds. In particular, as you start watching your mindful money number, that is your long-term growing passive income grow. And you will realize that it all quickly adds up. Everything counts and all those sacrifices and hard work are definitely worth it. And that you really do deserve so much better in life. And guess what? You're going to get it. So thank you everyone for watching. Have a fantastic week ahead. Please make sure you're subscribed and I will see you next Thursday on Sugar Mama TV. And of course, let me know what other subscriber requests you might have. Ciao for now.